Praise the Lord and welcome, 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 welcome to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. Come on in to our studio today. We're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're continuing the series, The Elements of a Growing Church. You want to call your neighbor, call your friend, tell them that Jesus is the answer on the air. Amen. In Los Angeles on our local television stations and around the world on GitaTV.org. And we're on Roku. Yes. Amen. You can tune in to us on Roku. We're all over the world spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I am excited every time somebody goes down in Jesus' name, every time somebody receives the Lord, every time somebody says, I want to be saved. And that's what is my payoff. That's my reward. Amen. And so I just want to thank God for you tuning in. Let's give the winds a mighty blow. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus is coming back again and I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Woo! Glory to God. I feel the anointing today. I feel somebody getting healed right now. I see somebody getting financial breakthrough right now. I see families coming back together right now. I see God helping somebody solve a crime that has been done against your family. God said, it is opening up for you in Jesus' mighty name. I see somebody receiving a miracle on their job. They're trying to fire you. But God said it's a turnaround. And not only is that going to keep you, God says they're getting ready to bless you with a raise bigger than you ever thought you could have. I see in the name of the Lord people being healed. I feel the anointing of healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Woo! Oh, let me tell you something right now. When I went to heaven when I was 18 years old, God anointed my hands. He anointed my hands for three things. One, for miracles. Amen. And so I've traveled all over the world and miracles have been performed. And over 10,000 people baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh my God, I'm just excited about what God has done. Amen. I've been ministering 46 years and I'm not tired yet. <laughs> you know, the song says, I'm not tired yet. I am not tired yet yet I am excited about what God is doing and I'm excited that he's not done yet he's not done with me he's not done with you but what I was telling you, when he took me to heaven he anointed my hands amen he anointed my hands and amen and, and, and my hands actually turn red and sometimes they are so hot that ashes actually form like after you do a red hot barbecue and the and the fire goes out and you see that the wood turns red my hands actually turn red amen for three things one for miracles one for healing. When I was just praying for those to be healed in the name of Jesus. There it is right now. There it is right now. Receive it in Jesus' name. There's a woman getting out of a wheelchair right now in Jesus' name. There's a young man being healed of massive headaches in Jesus' name. There's somebody being healed. Your eyes are being opened. They were blind and you're coming open in Jesus' name. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody has a lung issue. God says your lungs are opening right now in Jesus' mighty name. Someone's having memory problems in Jesus' name. You're being healed right now. Somebody, amen, is being healed. Their leg circulation is being healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. God said you're getting up from there. Get up from there and dance. Shout. And give God the honor and the glory. There's a daughter, amen, who's very rebellious. God said her spirit is changing right now in Jesus name mother do not give up on her in Jesus name God said he's turning around because she's an evangelist that son that rebellious son is a prophet of God and like Solomon he's going through all the elements of the world so that when he comes out he'll understand that the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments anyway my hand is burning now there are some of you that need a financial miracle and breakthrough it just seems like like no, no matter what you do, no matter where you turn, no matter what you do or where you 
U-turn, things are just not happening. But God said the, the Red Sea that you face is opening now. And my hand is beginning to burn for financial breakthrough miracles out of nowhere in Jesus' name. So if you touch that screen right now, I decree in Jesus' name that the finances come. And when my hand begins to burn, I must lay hands on your seed. I need a seed. I need you to sow a seed. Go to Cash App right now. Go to gtv.org right now. Sow a seed. I must lay hands on it in the next 20 minutes. I must lay hands on your seed. Whatever it is, I need you to sow it. And I will lay hands while my hands are burning because it comes when the anointing says so, not when I say so. In Jesus' mighty, oh, there it is right now. There it is. Move quickly. Move quickly to Cash App. Move quickly to Gita TV. Move quickly to Zell. In the name of Jesus. And sow the best seed you can in Jesus' mighty name. Woo! Those that just sowed, the miracles happen. Those that are moving right now. Those that are moving, the anointing is moving right now in Jesus' name. This is not a gimmick. You can ask people all over the world. When God anoints, the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree financial curses to be broken in your life. I decree witchcraft coming against you to cause you to lose everything. I bind it in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of lack in Jesus' name. I bind unemployment in Jesus' name. I bind, amen, every financial bondage for you in Jesus' mighty name. It's done. It's done. The anointing is flowing. While I'm teaching, the anointing will be flowing. Before this broadcast ends, go to Cash App. Before this broadcast ends, go to Zell. Before the broadcast ends, go to g2tv.org. All right? God bless you. Amen. I pray for you. I pray for you to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And experience the joy of God's salvation. Amen. I'm going to go now. I have an announcer that's going to come on and tell you how to be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. And how to sow seeds or how to, you know, support this ministry. Amen. We need your prayers and we need your financial support. Amen. He's going to come back. Now, remember, we're finishing. We're getting into this series, The Elements of a Growing Church. Not just a just growing in people, but growing in power, growing in the anointing. Because we don't want to have a form of godliness and deny the power. All right? So we're going to go to this message and we'll be right back right after this. If you have been blessed by the ministry of Jitter TV and Bishop Johnson, we would love to hear from you. For prayer requests and donations, please visit us online at www.jittertv.org or call our prayer counsellors who are standing by to take your prayer request and donations 24-7 at 310-637-7086. Thanks in advance for your prayers and financial support as we continue to change lives around the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, welcome back to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. I am so excited about the love and the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm just excited to be saved. I'm so happy I'm saved. You know, I honestly say to you, I don't know where I would be if I wasn't saved. And I'm so glad I did, did, wasn't worldly. I'm so glad Jesus got me as a young boy. Amen. And I'm so glad that God has been able to walk with me through Hollywood, through Compton, Watts, South Central L.A. Uh, I've traveled all over the world through Atlanta, Texas. Uh, oh, my God. Florida. Amen. God has taken me all kinds of places. Amen. And, and, and baptized over 10,000 people. It's growing more than that now. So, but at least, you know, I don't count all of them, but I know I baptize. God has blessed me to baptize over 10,000 people and he gets all the honor, glory, and praise. I'm just a vessel. I'm just walking with him and going where he's, the Bible says he would send, send us where he would later come. So wherever I went, Jesus showed up. And great revival took place. Amen. We had an Azusa Street experience in Georgia back in the early 2000s. Amen. And Tyler Perry was all, all Tyler Perry was there too during some of that revival. Amen. And so I'm just excited. Now he's a billionaire. Amen. So many people have turned to the Lord and God has made them rich. But the Bible says when you come into a land flowing 
with milk and honey. See that you forget not the Lord thy God, for it is he that has given thee power to obtain wealth that he may establish his covenant. You know, a lot of people think that the church wants your money. No, I had a pastor who passed away and they went to do some construction in his church and found over a million dollars in the walls of the building. <laughs> You see, God going to take care of his children. Amen. What he does is he gives you an opportunity to give to be blessed. It's not that God wants your money. He already has your money. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But what he wants to do is give you an opportunity to tithe into good ground. Tithe into somebody is working. Tithe into somebody is preaching. Tithe into where people are being saved. That's what God is all about. He's not coming back for your big old pretty church. He's not coming back for your cars, your big mansion. He's coming back for a church which is human beings without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. So he's not coming back for a church full of alcoholics and, and a church full of pimps, prostitutes, homosexuals, all that stuff. He's not coming back for that. He's coming back for a people who are holy and who have separated and dedicated their lives to be like Christ. Amen. And that's what I want to be. I want to be like Jesus. I want to love like Jesus. Amen. How about you? Let's go to the book of Acts. Amen. And we, the last time we left off, we uh, pointed out that all these people uh, from different nations under heaven were at um, uh, in Jerusalem and they were there for a, a conference. Like you guys have a uh, conference or you have a uh, convention for your, all your different churches, amen, whether it be the PAW, whether it be the Church of God in Christ, whether it be the Assemblies of God, all of them convene together at least once or twice a year and then they have local meetings and stuff like that in, in their organization so that they could, you know, band together and do things together. And it, and it works, amen, but when it becomes totally political, then you kick Jesus out the door and the book of Revelation says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not standing and knocking at the door of the club. He ain't standing at the door uh, 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 of the nudie bar. He's standing at the door of the church because sometimes we could get so technical and so religious and so all these things that we put Jesus out. We no longer know how to be led by the Spirit. Our programs and our services, A, B, C, D, there's no move of God, there's no healing, there's no miracles, there's no open, there's nothing. Amen. No word, no tongues, interpretation of tongues, no healing, no words of knowledge, words of wisdom, nothing. Just a regular church service. And you put Jesus out and he's trying to come in. He might jump in a child or might try to get up and test or shut him up. Somebody jumps up, starts speaking up. Hush! Bishop speaking. Sometimes Bishop need to shut up and listen. Hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. This is not a dictatorship. This is a lordship where Jesus Christ is Lord. And he should be able to take over your church and do whatever he wants when he wants. But instead, he's standing outside the door knocking. And he said, if you open up, I will come in and I will sup with you. Sup means I'll sit down and, and, and reason and pray with you and, and, and reveal my word to you. That's what Jesus wants to do. But we have structured Jesus out of the church service. We don't even have any anointing when we preach anymore. We don't even have word of knowledge anymore. We don't, we, we don't even see. We don't, we don't have, and we lock the prophets out. We lock the, the teachers out. We, lock, we got teachers. Everybody got teachers. You know why? Because a lot of people are teaching as an excuse for no anointing. <laughs> it's easy to teach. But when the anointing is flowing in the air, you feel it. It moves. It, it, it stirs stuff. Amen. Even if you're teaching. Amen. Like the great Dr. Fred Price. When he taught, things stirred. Amen. Some people teach. Man, it's so dead. I want to go to the funeral home and say, bring me a casket and put it right next to them. Okay. So as soon as they finish, we can just throw them in there. Amen. God wants a lively church. He said, we are lively stones. He said, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Have you ever seen somebody get burnt on their toe and go, ouch. Oh, dear. No. Ah! Make some noise. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When I'm preaching, can somebody say amen? If I'm preaching the truth, say something. Help me out here. Amen. But I'm going to preach truth whether you say amen or not. And I'm not going to allow your amens to dictate me out of the will of God. That I'm not going to do. But when you're hearing the truth, somebody say amen. Can I get an amen out there? 
Amen. Can I get an amen? So watch this. So the Bible says all these men came together. But look at verse uh, 13, 12. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 12. And they were all amazed and were perplexed or astonished, saying one to another, what does this mean? What does this mean that these guys are from one place and they're able to speak all these worldwide languages and they don't know these languages, they're not from these places. What does this mean? And then others mocking said, these are full of new wine. That's why a lot of people uh, went to a holiness church when they was younger and they saw all the shouting and dancing, speaking in tongues. Oh, I don't want that kind of church. Oh, that stuff scared me. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want that kind of church. I'm going to go to my sophisticated, dignified, politically correct church. Amen. I, I don't want to see all them unintelligent folks. One pastor, one time, the older pastor was leaving his church and uh, he said, uh, you know, I would, I would give you this church. I was looking for a, a pastor to give the church to. He said, but y'all too wild. <laughs> y'all do, y'all speaking in tongue and people laying out on the floor and rolling under the seats and oh my God, what is all this? This is unintelligent. Amen. So people don't want to, they don't want to deal with the move of God anymore. Okay. You can still feel the power of the Holy Ghost and God can still walk through a church and we can still have a multi-million dollar ministry. Yes. Amen. The same God that gave all you guys the money and the wisdom to build all these big old churches and big old city churches. But who's getting saved? Who's receiving the Holy Ghost? Who's changing their lives? I went to the church one time, big church. Amen. And I went in there and, and uh, I, I walked across the one lady and I looked back. She looked like she wanted to throw me out the church. I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm just trying to get a seat. Amen. So <laughs> we talk about the church of Jesus Christ. There should be love in there. Amen. Not people fighting over a seat, fighting over an offering, fighting over all this stuff. Amen. But love. So the Bible says, and, and, and others mocking said, these are full of new wine. So they're looking at us like we drunk folks because we speak it in tongue. And, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this, you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. So the first thing is you got you to gotta have the Holy Ghost and it comes with speaking in tongue. The second thing, the gifts of operation. Amen. And here's the third thing. He said, hearken to my words. You need the word of God. You got to have the word of God. You can't, if you're not preaching the word, you're just preaching about your stories back in the South. Back when we was in Mississippi, we used to cut the hog's head and they used to squeak, squeak, squeak. And, and, and my mama, you know, she was the best cook. And I, no, we need to hear Jesus. We need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to know about Jesus. We need to preach Jesus. Why? Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. So we need to lift up Jesus. Lift him up and watch him draw all men unto him like he did here. So we have to have the...
And the verse 15 is explanation. See, <laughs> I had to stop for a minute because the, the Holy Ghost hit me and said, people are scared of all the speaking in tongues and the miracles and the healings because we're not explaining what it is. Explanation. The next thing we need, we need the word, but we need the word ex explained. We need people to have explained what they see. When Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, he said, no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus cut, said, cut all the mess. You must be born again. I know what you're looking for. He said, you, don't, you, you may not understand all the miracles and all that, but I know you want this. You want this. Okay, that's why you came to me. You snuck to me by night. Why? Because you're going against the beliefs of your constituents. In order for you to be saved, you're going to have to go against the belief of your political and your religious constituents or your partners. Because all of your partners are ostracizing the Pentecostal church. They're ostracizing speaking in tongue. The, the, the seminaries or the cemeteries, I mean seminaries, are teaching against the power of the Holy Ghost and telling you it's intelligence that helps you build a church. Yes, it helps you build a building. Yes, it helps you build a congregation. But does it help you build a church? Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we have all these things happening in the Pentecostal church, but people don't are not getting the explanation of what it is. So what is Paul, what is Peter doing here? For these are not drunk with wine as you suppose. You're looking from the outside in. These are not drunk with wine as you are supposed, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken through the prophet Joel. So what is he pointing out? The Old Testament predicted that this would happen. But because you only read the book of Psalms and Proverbs and you only read, you only quote the 23rd Psalm and you only quote the Lord's Prayer, you didn't know that this was in the book of Joel, but it's being manifested in, in today's time. There are things in the Old Testament that God has said that are being manifested right now, but because you don't know, you never knew it was said because you never went back and read. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But because you did not go and get that word in the Old Testament, this is foreign to you. It's a shame how many people, how many kids know scriptures today. It's a shame that people don't even know the 23rd Psalm no more. They don't even know what John 3.16 says no more. Amen. It's ridiculous. They know every they know rap music, they know they know Tupac, Me Against the World, Dear Mama, they know all these songs, but they don't know basic scripture text. Why? One, you don't take them to church. You don't go to church. Your mama didn't take you to church. So you're ignorant to the word. And two, we're not teaching the truth. People have stopped teaching the truth because they don't want to offend folks. Because if they offend folks, they cannot run their multi-million dollar mega ministries. Okay? So this is my last thing and I got to go. For they are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken, verse 16, Acts 2.16. But this is that which was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and handmaids will I pour out of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Prophesy means to preach. And I shall show wonders in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath. And, and, and in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness. Those are eclipse. And the moon into blood. Red moon. You ain't seen a red moon? Before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're explaining what is all this tongue talking and falling out and healing and miracles. And we need to explain. Okay. 
Preaching proclaims, teaching explains. I'm going to stop there. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Join us next week. We're going to pick up the elements of a growing church. Amen. And I hope that you were blessed by today's message. Amen. Send us your most urgent prayer request at gtv.org. And remember, this is family television with power. Go to Cash App now. Go to gtv.org. Sow the best seed you can. This is an opportunity for you. If you don't have a church and you want to tithe here, send your tithes. Amen. We will bless them. We will keep record of them. Amen. We'll report, give you reports at the end of the year. And if you want to send a large offering, 1,000, 10,000, 20,000, move to that TV right now. Remember, during this broadcast, my hand began to burn for financial breakthrough and to tear down the Red Seas in your finances. God's going to give you, you've been trying to start the business. It just wouldn't work. You've been trying to write. You just couldn't move. You got writer's block. Just so many things are happening, but God said they're moving now in Jesus' name. If you sold to that cash app, if you sold to the Zelle, if you sold to the PayPal, Films at AOL.com. That's our PayPal. If you sold, God's going to move and he's going to bless your life. He's going to break those financial yokes in your life. And you're going to be able to start that business and prosper. Amen. Well, God bless you. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. On behalf of all the saints, partners, and friends of this great ministry, I say to you, no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.